So Keyboard Maestro is one of those apps that I would recommend anyone getting started with Mac automation to immediately invest in. It's gonna save you a ton of time, it's gonna be super powerful, and it could wind up being the only automation tool that you ever need to use. That said, even the creators of Keyboard Maestro have recognized that there's just one minor flaw, and that's getting started. Keyboard Maestro can be really intimidating, and there's a lot of options that you can choose from. One of the first things that I learned about Keyboard Maestro that eased me into that process was you don't have to use everything. In fact, most of my Keyboard Maestro actions are just a few actions, usually like three or less. So I'm gonna break down four Keyboard Maestro workflows that are three actions or less that I use every week in my workflow. Let's get into it. Before we get started, I wanna give a big shout out to the Keyboard Maestro Field Guide by Max Sparky. David Sparks has created a bunch of amazing field guides and the Keyboard Maestro Field Guide is no exception. With over five hours of content, 90 videos, David covers everything that you would need to just become a full expert in the art of Keyboard Maestro automation on the Mac. And trust me, I've spoken with David a few times and his ability to run a successful podcasting career as well as a successful law practice is all based on the fact that he uses Keyboard Maestro to its full potential every single day. So whether you're just trying to create a simple Keyboard Maestro macro or you wanna run your entire life on it, the Keyboard Maestro Field Guide is the way to go. I'll have a link in the description that you can use. Another big honorable mention is the Keyboard Maestro Forum. Now, whenever I'm stuck trying to figure out how to get a macro to work or to get a, a certain action to operate the way that I want it to, I turn to the forum. They have amazing moderators and everyone is helpful and wants you to have your action work. There's a ton of macros in the library for you to choose from. You have plenty of things and there's some amazing folks in there that have been automating with Keyboard Maestro for years. You don't have to repeat the wheel. You don't have to learn by yourself. I highly encourage you take advantage of the Keyboard Maestro Forum. Now, with that said, let's jump into the actions. Now, the first action I wanna talk about is a really simple one. It's basically just open up a folder. In fact, it's open up the exact folder that I want open. And for me, this is usually the desktop. I actually do keep a lot of files on my desktop and use that as a staging area for Hazel and other workflows to kind of do their thing. So often if I'm looking for something, it's just hit control D and then the desktop opens and you can see the, the wild mess that's in there now. But as you can see, it's just this simple open file folder or application option. And then I just put my local directory, which is that tilde sign, a slash desktop and then it's there it's open it's really simple really easy but it's one of those that i use all the time now the second one is one that i use as a podcaster but i could also see a lot of application in this and other fields and that's to open up a text file and insert some text in this particular case i'm using a tool called bb edit now, this is one that I usually trigger somewhere else. Like I'll have another automation that'll just trigger this automation for me so I don't have to. So we're just gonna hit the run command here. And as you can see, when we do so, boom, it's open, it's there and no problem. Actually, there was a problem because I already had a, a copy of it there. Let's run it again. I just hit the run command and boom, there it's open and we're ready to go. And as you can see, it was it was fast, it was simple. I didn't have to think too hard about it. I have the show notes for the show where I can go and start filling out other information and you know, life's great. Now, how do you make this? Well, simple, it's just two different actions. So step one, you're gonna activate a specific application. So at the top, 
drag that in you're gonna select the application for me it was BB edit boom it's there and then the next step is you're gonna insert text by pasting now you have a few options there you can insert styled text or you can type the text in but for this it's pretty simple so we can just do insert text by pasting and then we just in enter the text that we'd want right there pretty simple now this third macro is one that I've talked about in a previous video. I'll have a link to it in the show notes, but I just want to reiterate how powerful it is because it allows you to automate virtually any file that you have on your computer. And that is basically just iterating over a selection of files and running actions on them. I'm going to show you how I do this one more time just to show how easy it is. So let's disable that action. We're gonna go into our action menu and we're gonna go to for each path in finder selection. Now, if you wanted to just do this for a folder all the time, you totally could. I would probably recommend something like Hazel unless you just want to execute those you know, actions at a specific time. But I love doing this because it's, it's just super easy. I can just select a bunch of files. They don't have to be in the same folder. They can be anywhere. It can be one, it could be one million. I probably wouldn't recommend trying 1 million, but you get the point. It could be a lot. So it assigns this var name variable. We can change that, but we're just going to leave it as is for now. And then we're going to go back to the actions panel and we're going to search for, we're going to search for tag because that works to set file attribute. And we're going to set the tag. We're going to add a tag and we're going to set that tag to video. I want to take a video and then we're going to assign the variable, which you do by percent sign variable, another percent sign, and then whatever the variable name is, which in this case it's var name and we hit okay. I'm going to hit my fancy keyboard shortcut to open up my desktop. I have a video right here. Now I have this activated with the hyper key and T. So I just hit hyper key T. Let's check this, check the tags video right there already assigned and just to prove it i'm going to unassign it i'm going to check it again i haven't hit anything you can hear it with my loud keyboard we'll check tags there's no tags there i select it i hit hyper key t check tags again boom videos there it's that simple and again i can do this for a bunch of different files if I have videos all over the place I can select them all hit the button and it works again I literally just hit one key and it quickly tagged that file I don't have to think about it I just hit the button and it works now the last one in my opinion is the most important because it is perhaps the most powerful yet underutilized action that I see and that is the move and click from found image action. And this is what I often call the I don't know button. When there's an application that doesn't have automation set up for it, I turn to this to allow me to still automate using basically screenshots. So Audio Hijack doesn't have any automation support out of the box but they provide you this menu board to choose your audio recording settings. So I can take a screenshot of the option that I want to click and tie that into an automation. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's running and then I'm gonna show you how I made it. Let's hit run and there we've opened up the particular file using the selected option. So now let's talk about how this was made. Basically, you create another activate application section. You can do that here. It's, it's always the very first option. You just select that there. Tell it to activate audio hijack in this case. And then for move and double click at the center of the found image, let's do a different one. Let's do a uh, tech talk, another podcast that I do regularly. I'm going to select my screenshot selection tool. I use a tool called clean shot, and then I'm going to select the whole image. 
it's gonna pull this image down at the bottom and I can just drag that in to where this image file is. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do here. If you don't want to click in the absolute center, which would be about here, cause you know, if you click it, if you click a little too low, you get into this rename prompt, you don't want that. You can actually tell it, uh, maybe move up a little bit and you can test it oh, a little bit too much. So let's try it again. All right, we see where it thinks it is. I can adjust the fuzziness. I can make it less accurate and then we get a bunch of options or I can make it extremely accurate and then we get a single option and I can have it instantly check where it's going to click. And again, we can even have it move around. If we want it to move up a little bit. That way we don't get that rename prompt all the time. We can do that. And it's that simple. I can tell it to single click. I can tell it to double click. I can tell it to just move the mouse there and don't do anything else. There's a lot of options that you have with this that allow you to extend applications that aren't made with automation in mind. And that's it. That's how you do this. Um, as I mentioned, they're all relatively simple automations. You can use as many things as you want, or you can just choose to keep it simple. And I prefer to keep things simple. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. We've seen a lot of growth on the channel. I'm loving it, but that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what application you'd like me to break down next. We'll talk about it and I can't wait to do so in the next video. But until then, I don't know, go try out Keyboard Maestro or something. See ya.